Hi, my name is Daniel Walker. I'm the hardware product manager for Philips Dynalite, and today I'd like to talk to you about our infinitely flexible DDMC802, the Dynalite DINRAIL modular controller, eight channels by two amps. With this device, we can turn around and populate it with any one of our output modules, allowing for flexibility of its um, output channels. These selection from trailing edge modules to leading edge modules, relay modules, blind control modules, driver modules, as well as fan speed modules. With this, the unit can be pre-populated with any one of these output modules, mixed and matched to suit the project's needs, or they can be left out as spare capacity. Today, we'll step through about how it is that these modules are installed, and also about how it is the device can be configured, uh, allowing us for, to be able to use it into just about any project situation that may be required. With the DDMC802, it follows the same architecture as all other Dynalite devices. So we have a pluggable Dynet connection. We also have eight dry contact inputs, so that if we're working with any low level input devices, we can use this to trigger a preset scene or any other logical functions within the device. We have our standard uh, terminals across the top, so power supply on the top right, and very general terminals uh, for the output channels. We still have our sign-on button on the top left and across the top we have manual overrides allowing for installing contractors to be able to test their output terminations. The product has been designed so that we can put a screwdriver down the side of its housing and remove the top level cover without the need for removing any of the termination wires. Now that we've removed the top cover, we can see um, that within the housing itself, we have additional protective layers. So this is a housing that has been designed by us to ensure that it can be removed from the DIN rail base uh, without obstructing any of the terminations. We also have some additional barriers within this housing, making sure that nothing could, from the DB could fall into the case. We do recommend that when you take the cover off the device, you isolate the power, but we do have this extra cover here just to be able to protect the installing contractor from any mains power, but also to protect the device's internal electronics. With the output modules, they all follow the same format. So this is a two by two amp trailing edge module. Uh, we can sit there and blind install this. Uh, so it's very easy to insert. It can be installed in any location, but we can also mix and match. So this is a two by two trailing edge. This is a two channel one to 10 or daily broadcast module. This is a two channel relay module. And we can also have this as a fan speed control module. And you can see that the installation is a blind insert, so I don't even need to look at locating the pins as they will go in quite easily. Uh, one by one, and now we have mixed controls of trailing edge phase cut, daily broadcast, relay switching, and fan control, all based within one unit. We can then put the cover back onto the unit, and now it's ready to go. When repowered, the device will automatically recognize each of the different modules that have been installed, and this will show up in our commissioning software system builder and identify about how each of the modules need to be configured. There's no need to go through and tell the device which module has been installed into which location. Another big advantage of this de device is that if the client changes their mind, they can go through and change the modules inside to be able to suit their needs. So if originally the project only had budget for a relay output module within this location, this can be removed. And now they want to opt for a dimming module. This can be located in. And now the relay module has turned into a dimming module. This allows for projects to be able to change uh, their output requirements as the project may mature or their needs may change without replacing the entire base unit or changing of the terminations. Detailing on some of the individual modules functionality, this is our DGBM 200 module. So this is two channels that can be selected for either one to 10 outputs or daily broadcast. When in daily broadcast mode, we can drive the units into tunable white, allowing us for a cost-effective method of delivering daily tunable white without the complexity of having to go through daily addressing.
This allows us to be able to drive fans so we can have it at high, medium, low or off. This is the DGRM 2x4 amps. So this is a two channel relay module. This allows us to switch two channels at four amps each of lighting. This is the DGCM 102. This is a blind control module. This allows us to be able to drive uh, motorized blinds for up, down, stop control. So this can be used for screens, blinds or shades. We then have leading edge phase cut modules, so either 1x4 amps or 2x2 amps. And then we have a range of trailing edge phase cut modules, so either 4x2 amps, 2x2 amps or 1x4 amps. This allows us the flexibility of, of having either small 2x2 uh, two, two amp channels or much larger capacity 5 amp channels. So with this unit, we can mix and match the output modules as the project needs, but also that we can leave the uh, module slots empty so that we can have a more cost-effective solution, not having any idle capacity that the project has to pay for but not utilise. And then as the project matures or goes on or there may be any other changes, we can go through and populate modules within this base unit to accommodate. Once we've complete, the lid can then be uh, remounted onto the base unit. The override keypad pins will self-locate. There is no external ribbon that needs to be located. And the base unit is ready to go. Thank you so much for your time in hearing about our mixed modular controller, the DDMC 802.